Everybody, it's Chris with Prepared Mind 101, and I've got a new knife to show you today. This is one that I chose to buy for myself. It's not a new release or anything like that, but I've been eyeballing it for a long time, and I was asking myself, why does nobody talk about this knife? Yeah, it's a Bark River. I paid for it, okay? It wasn't, <laughs> it's not a sponsor thing. People talk about the Bravo 1s all the time, the Bravo 1 LTs. I even see people talking about the 1.25s, the 1.5s, and the Bravo 3s. I'm like, why is no one ever talking about the Bravo 2? And that's the one that I'd never gotten to get my hands on. I'm like, just looking at the specs, this looks like it might be a great, heavy-duty, large survival-type knife. I'm going to get one. Well, I got one. And we're going to put my first impressions on camera today. So, as I was saying, what we're talking about here is the Bark River Bravo 2 and CPM 3V. Now, because this isn't a new release or anything like that, I did check with DLT to just kind of see how many they had in stock. And they got a good amount of them. So I'm like, okay, I'll go ahead and do this video. So if you want to find out more about this knife, don't go away. All right, let's first take a quick rundown with the important specs. This is the Bravo 2 in CPM 3V with a black canvas micarta handle. I picked this up at DLT Trading for, what was it, about 277, I wanna say. It has an overall length of 12.25 inches and it has a blade length of seven inches. So seven inch blades, now we're getting back to way back in the beginning with the original Jessica knife, the BK7 seven inch blade. But this has a blade thickness of 0.25 inches. So it's quite a bit more stout. Rockwell is 59 to 60. Plain edge. Handle thickness is about uh, 1.03 inches. And the weight is 15.5 ounces. So. This is a big solid knife big solid slab of CPM 3V. There's no weirdness to it, no gimmicky survival type design. It's just a big Bravo. Bravo handle, Bravo blade, but longer. Of course, I got you know, not everybody likes the ramped versions, but I don't know, it's kind of just like an aesthetic thing. It doesn't seem like a Bravo knife if it does not have that. So it's like a saber vex, you know, it looks like a saber grind, but they convex everything. So that's going to be really good at batoning, especially with that thickness, that quarter inch thickness. So you get this big solid beast in your hand, you're like, yeah, I ain't breaking that. That is craziness. And just something about the simplicity of it. Really, it, it's everything I thought it was going to be. I think in my head, though, I wasn't quite ready for that big quarter-inch heftiness. I mean, it's not too heavy. It, it feels right for the size of the knife. But I think that is mainly because in the smaller ones, in the Bravo 1s, eh, I didn't really vibe with the Bravo 1. I, I vibed with the Bravo 1 LT, which was the thinner one. But this thing, wow, feels really nice. Now the sheath, you've seen this style of sheath before, and it, it did come with the... Uh, like the scout straps, I don't use those, so I didn't put them on. It came with a little ferro rod loop. 
I don't use that, I, so I didn't put it on. I'll probably end up kydexing this knife. But the sheath, I went ahead and oiled it. Now this strap, people that are not used to Bark River sheaths with these straps, it kind of varies. But more often than not, before you oil it or stretch it or anything, you're going to think that the strap is not long enough. Like out of the box is absolutely impossible to snap this. So what you are supposed to do is you're supposed to run this strap in hot water. Both sides here. And then you're going to pull it and stretch it over until you can snap it. If you have a hard, I don't know if this is the intended purpose of it, but it works great. If, if you're having a little hard time stretching it, just put some twine through this part right here. So you can just pull it tight, snap it, and just sit it down overnight and let it dry. And then in the morning, that snap is going to be perfect retention. So I really like that about these sheaths. For no particular reason, the first thing that I'm curious about, being that, you know, the design and shape of this thing this is not the type of blade design that I my brain would go to as you know a chopper but being that because like with uh, you know the just knife the BK7 and if you're new to the channel you're like what the hell is he talking about ask one of the old school viewers they'll tell you <laughs> I mean BK7 in no way did I ever consider to be a chopper but with this quarter inch thickness and the handle back here, it seems to lend itself to a, a three-finger grip. And I'm just curious about light chopping, like craft chopping. So I just want to use what I got available here and see. Again, this is first time use. Still not what I would consider a chopper, but it's got enough, you know, heft behind it. Maybe something a little bit smaller. If you're trying to make a tent stake. It's got the bite. I just wanted to see. Might use a little bit too big of a stick for this. But batoning, yeah, that should be a piece of cake. <laughs> Matter of fact, since this since it rained out here this morning, I'm actually hammering this into the log with the knife. Because why not? No, I couldn't film yesterday when everything was nice and sunny and dry. I mean, if you're going to baton wood, 3V knife with this thickness and this grind and this length. That is definitely always going to do the trick. Find that angle, brand new knife. This Barker River always does his convex edges. Once you get used to them, it doesn't take long to, to figure it out. Go lighter. Great edge. I don't usually feather stick with quarter inch thick knives, but I, you know, I'm viewing this as a survival type knife. So there's always gonna be trade-offs with a survival type knife. 
some things are going to be easier than others. You know, for people that want to live the fantasy of, you've only got one knife. Just one. It's the only thing you got. Can you trust your life to it? I like this thing. This is in a really interesting spot among the knives, my keepers in my collection, as far as size and dimensions and everything. So just by way of comparison, I brought another one out here. So what came to mind when I was coming out here, and I want to grab one other knife because of the impressions that I had of that when I first got it. And that is the, the Bark River Squad Leader 2. Now I recall when I first got this knife, I got it because it looked cool, but it's got quarter inch thick spine as well. And at first I was like, I don't know, it's maybe it's a little thick for what I'm used to. And then it grew on me, like surprisingly grew on me. And I'm like, oh, this is definitely a keeper. So, but back then, this was kind of like the big thick bark river, you know, in my head. And now we've got the Bravo 2, which is quite a bit longer with more total thickness, you know, all the way down to the tip. Where, where on this one, it kind of thins out a little bit, lightens, you know, this is a lighter knife. But, I mean, for some people, they're still into these types of knives. It kind of died off a while. People got over the, the survival craze. But, I like all types of knives. I like to mix it up a little bit. There's a bunch of new Bark Rivers that came out. But I'm like, I want to kind of go back. I want to do something different. I want to get this one I've always looked at. Interesting. Let's check out that spine. Because, as I see it, if you're thinking of this in those terms, the spine needs to be usable. And with Bark Rivers, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell just by my finger, but this feels like it's going to do the job. So. Oh, yeah. So. Works outstanding on a six inch ferro rod, which means I'm also going to be able to use it for debarking or doing any kind of fine fluff. You got the right kind. Of, if you're lucky enough to have some pine around you. <laughs> I, I swear, I live in the one spot in the United States where like everything sucks. We don't have any of those magic fire trees. Not a whole big abundance of, you know, soft woods, firs. Nope, everything is hardwood. It's like when I go out in the woods, all it is is a big freaking furniture factory resource warehouse. Nothing else. Gotta work harder for everything. But. Yeah, I mean, for my first impressions of this, there's so many knives out there. So, mainly, the Bark River group has gotten so big. This, to me, felt like one of those forgotten knives or overlooked knives. It's always Bravo 1.25, Bravo 1.5, Bravo 1, Bravo 1 LT, Bravo 3. It's like, no love for the Bravo 2? What's up with that? This is a freaking cool knife. It's a beast. And when would I use this? I don't know. I mean, I've got... That's the problem. I mean, I got it because I like it. But me personally, I would probably be carrying something lighter normally. Uh, like maybe a Fox River EXT1 or the Jessmic. And then maybe have, you know, JX5 in the pack or whatnot. But... You know, everybody's different, so you got to kind of show different things. But I'm glad I got it.
not unhappy with this purchase one bit. So that's like my first impressions of this knife, uh, first time use. My question is, what do you think about it? You know, especially in terms of the other knives in the Bravo lineup. It's definitely in a unique spot where it's big without, not, without being too big, but with the, all the different types of use. I mean, it's just, I can't say this. You definitely need this for whatever specific reason. I think it's more for people that like big, stout, survival type knives. It's not a, like a finesse cutter. I'm not going to you know, skin out a game animal or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, it's... You know, I'd almost like to see an LT version of this. I doubt that would happen. But, I'm curious. Because I really, really like the Bravo 1 LT. Bravo 1 LT is freaking awesome. So, I'm, I would like to see a bigger... Ver or the same, like a, a Bravo 2 LT. That would be pretty cool to me. I would like that a lot. And it would significantly drop the weight, feel more agile in the hand. But to some people, they may want this. They want that extra heft because when you are doing the light chopping, and you're not trying to chop what I was trying to chop. You know, the handle does work well in that three finger grip where you could do some light chopping, like removing some branches or whatnot. But all in all, hmm, it's a keeper. I like it. Can't say how much I'm going to use it with what I have, but I will definitely use it again. So if this one floats your boat, because I checked and with DLT, I'm like, I know this has kind of been sitting here for a while. How many of these you got? I know they got like at least 60, 60 some, and I'd have to check on Knife Ship Free, but if DLT has them, I pretty much bet that. Knife Ship Free probably does too. I got mine through DLT. So if you're interested in this, I will put links to it in the description box below. All right, guys, that's what I got for right now. Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.